welcome back to the studio. Uh, in the last couple of videos, I was working with this particular oriental uh, green quilt that you saw uh, in the intro. And uh, the first video, we talked about loading the quilt. The second video, we went over uh, thread basting the quilt uh, for a multitude of reasons. Some people like to have a quilt basted so that they could do hand stitching on it. Um, it's much easier to uh, quilt on it rather than having all of the pins on it. And it's a faster process of uh, basting it on the machine aside from the time it takes to actually load it. So we have the quilt ready to go. It's very heavily basted. The reason I basted it was because I'm going to be using a whole cloth pattern on it and the whole cloth pattern will cause the quilt to shrink in as all quilting does but because we're going to be quilting it from the center up and then the center down we want to make sure that we can try and mitigate as much of that shrinking as we can and the thread basting helps do that now I used a water soluble thread basting it's called Parish uh, I believe I was corrected and it's from Filtech um, I don't know if I said other than that the first time but the main thing is it's called Parish and it is a water soluble thread so um, I do want to be uh, quick about getting it basted uh, I never know how much humidity can affect something that's water soluble one time I had a queen size applique quilt that I made uh, the mark be gone water soluble pen I marked the whole background in the grid that I was going to quilt it on and then I came downstairs and got it on the frame and by the time I got ready to quilt it guess what all the water soluble marks had disappeared because it was so humid that summer so I'm always conscious of that um, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so we can go over some of the stuff that I have on my tabletop here um, it's almost all papers that are printed all from the Urban Elements website and I just want to show you sometimes how much comes with a specific type of pattern. Now, as I said, we're going to be doing whole cloth. So these are whole cloth examples. But um, they have multiple components to it. So you wouldn't just go and open one file from the set and download that. There's multiple things to download. So that's going to be the first part of what we do. Uh, it's going to be on the computer. But also, um, I just want to show you this first. So I'm going to move the camera so you can see some of the paperwork. Even if you can't see it clearly, you'll see an, ex uh, an example of how much there is. So let's go in. This is going to be an example of one of the whole cloth quilts. And I believe this one's called Moonflower. This is another example. This is called Tapestry. That's the Moonflower still. This is Tapestry. And then this one is called Heather. And you can see we have all the components to do this entire whole cloth. Here's just a blow up of just the whole cloth pattern. But here are some of the components that come with that. We have the uh, Heather and this could either be the uh, I think that's the regular panto this is the Heather uh, Petite we have the corner for the Petite we have the corner for the Heather we have a setting triangle block we have this unit and we have a circular block all of these would have to be downloaded uh, in the file format that suited your uh, computerized system and then you would have to bring all of those and upload them to the machine um, here's here's an example of that same set you see you have the full size panto the thinner one the corner for this one the setting triangle the corner for that one and the circular block so all of those pieces are a part of the design. Here's the example of what we're actually, what I think I'm going to be using today. This is called Moulin Rouge. And you can see here the uh, whole block, the whole quilt. Uh, 
And that's how uh, the first time I brought it in, I brought it in as one block, so it was that whole unit. And then you could enlarge or decrease as needed. So we had the setting triangle. This is the corner element for the panto. This would be the re uh, repeat of the panto. This is a petite version of the panto. That is, I believe, the uh, corner. And this is the block. So that is what we're going to do next. We're going to go inside and I'm going to show you, I'm going to do three different segments uh, and depending on their length, I never really know until we get done. One is I'm going to show you how to get all of your files from a whole cloth set. Two is we're going to bring a block in for a whole uh, quilt and this quilt is approximately 61 inches square but once we bring it in since we can only sew portions of it we will have to separate it out into rows and then recombine it so we can stitch those rows out the third thing is uh, we're going to show you how to just bring in rows because some machines some computer systems won't allow you to input more design than what you can actually sew so you'd have to bring it in in rows so we're going to go inside and look at that and um, maybe have a little bit of learning curve as we go we have the IntelliQuilter stick opened and I also have the PDF for the rows of Moulin Rouge open. You can see section one is here at the center, section two is here to the left, section three here in orange, section four here in green, section five in purple at the top. Then this whole process will be reversed uh, and work our way down. So we're going to design sew quilt, we're going to start new, and we have a work in progress, we do want to replace it, move it to the recycle bin, and we're going to reset our clock. Uh, what we're going to be doing is working with a block pattern so that we could bring in uh, multiple blocks, which are each of these rows and we're going to enter the rectangle manually. We have to do that right now because the uh, stick is not even connected to the uh, frame at all. We're just working on a program that is loaded onto my computer. So I'm going to put in 62 by 62. The quilt that I'm using is square and we're going to hit continue. And you can see here at the top, we have the representation of that quilt square, and we will hit finished. Now we're going to go down to downloads. Uh, we're going to be using Moulin Rouge. Um, so you'll see me going to the M over and over. So I'm going to click on M and then advance until we get to the first piece of Moulin Rouge. And that is here, Moulin Rouge, whole cloth, section one. So I'm going to click on that and hit continue. It's going to bring that pattern in, but you'll see it's using almost the entire uh, 62 inch square. So we're going to go to scale and you'll see me do this over and over with each segment that we bring in. We're going to scale it back to 100%. So I'm going to hit, it's on scale. We're going to hit 100 and enter. And now um, we may or may not have to move this, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and hit finish for now until we get some of the other segments in. Do we want to add another block? Yes, we do. I'm going to skip block two because it just floats in space. I won't have anything to connect it to. So I'm going to go ahead and move to section three, which is here in the orange. And I think it'll give me a little bit better uh, placement. So I'm going to use the current block, go back to Moulin Rouge. And we're going to bring in section three. Again, it's going to oversize it. And I'm going to turn on the grid at this point. 
and I'm going to hit scale and scale this back down to 100%. Now we can see that um, from our reference, this is a horizontal design, and right now it's on a diagonal. So we're going to hit rotation and get this as flat as we can. Now I'm going to hit move and I'm going to move this up. I'm going to turn my snap on. So hopefully uh, these items will snap together the way they're supposed to. And now I can go ahead and hit finished. Are we, do we get, want to add another block? Yes, we do. We're going to use our current block, which is the quilt itself. Again, we're going to go to M for Moulin Rouge. And this time we should be able to bring in section two of Moulin Rouge since we have something to connect it to. So I'm going to select it or highlight it, hit continue. We're going to have to size it again. This is 400%. We need to hit scale and type in 100%. Every single one of these components, we're going to scale to 100% so that they're all the same scale. Now I can hit move. And I'm going to use this point here to get it to snap to that point. <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and hit finished. Add another block. We're going to use this current block, which is this red line, which represents our quilt. M for Moulin Rouge. This time we should be able to get section four. It will, oh, what did I do? M. Continue. It'll bring it in oversized, but we're going to scale it again to 100%. All of these will be the same scale, and so we know that they'll all fit together because that's the way they were designed. Now we will rotate this to get it square. And now we can move it using one of these snap points. And my rotation's a little off. And now we can hit finished. I can always zoom in later and make sure that I have these pieces correct. Adding another block. Yes, we are using the current block. M for Moulin Rouge. We'll go over till we get to section five. And hit continue. We will size it to 100%. Right now it's at 140. We want everything at 100 and now we are going to rotate it. And move it. You can see now that it's up here that it's still the rotation's off a little bit. And we're going to move it, try and grab this far uh, snap, uh, this uh, little handle, move it down. That one looks like it's off just a little bit. And hit finished. I can see up here that we're going to have to adjust this a little bit. It is off, but I'm going to go ahead and continue moving down bringing in the rest of the pattern. 
once it's all together, it makes it a little bit easier to see the whole uh, alignment, if it's out or not. Continue to use the current block. We're going to Moulin Rouge. We're going to go back to the center section, section number one. We're going to bring it in at 100%. And you can see it there. I need to, re okay, the scale's back to 100%. I'm going to click on move. And now I'm going to grab one of these uh, points, these handles, and snap it. And that should be our center block. It looks to me like this whole unit is off a little bit. But we'll know better when we get to uh, the next section. Again, I'm going to... Well, at this point, I could bring in uh, section two this time because I do actually have something to connect it to. So um, I'm going to hit finished, add another block, use current block, Moulin Rouge, and we're going for uh, section two. We're going to make it 100%. And we're going to hit move. And we can see that if we look at the design here, we can see that this is uh, needs to be rotated. So I'm going to click rotation and get it in this order. Now I'm going to hit move and hopefully this snap point will click onto that one. And we can see we're off a little bit. So I can hit rotation. You can see the rotation is still off. And move. <clears throat> that looks close. We'll hit finish for now. Add another block and uh, using the current block download we'll use moulin rouge now we're going over for row three i believe hit scale Percentage is going to be 100 again. Enter. We can do the rotation on this. Now we could hit move and bring it down. Sometimes I like to bring it all the way out just so I could look for a snap point like this one and this one or uh, probably this one and this one and that will help us get this piece in position and just by grabbing this one and going straight up now we have um, that row done I'm going to go ahead and put four and five in and then I can adjust this center portion that we could clearly see now that is misaligned so I'm going to hit finished add another block use the current block M for Moulin Rouge. Now we're going for row four. And we'll hit continue. We're going to have to scale it to 100% and turn it right side up. And 
and you always want to change your button here before you touch this if I touched that first it would change the scale so I'm going to hit rotation rotate this into the right orientation now I can click move and I can bring it down and it looks like we're still maybe just a little lopsided I'm gonna check okay that looks a little better I'm gonna hit move again and I can grab this screen box and snap it onto that one and that should connect the rest of the pieces there and I will zoom in when we get a chance I'm gonna go ahead and finish the last uh, outer border using the current block still and we're going for row 5 of Moulin Rouge Moulin Rouge whole cloth section 5 we will of course have to scale this again to 100% and let's see we're going to hit our rotation and I'm going to hit move because right now I really can't see the design so I'm going to compare this to this row at the bottom or this one at the top just to make sure that I have the orientation correct and I believe I have to rotate this all the way okay I think this is the correct position because you can see our little stick here our starting point that needs to go up into the other edge of this and that would complete the border now I'm going to click move and I'm going to take that handlebar there and just take it straight up until it clicks to the other one. So now I can look at the overall piece. I'm not going to be adding any more blocks. The nice thing about this now is when I take this to the IntelliQuilter, the IntelliQuilter already knows these are sections. So this top row will sew then this next section and the whole thing. I won't have to break apart or recombine this design in any way. It's already set up for the IntelliQuilter. Um, I've got 10 rows here and the um, whole cloth quilt is 61 inches. So I have plenty of room for each of these rows to sew out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so um, I don't have to worry about breaking it up anymore. You can see here that I have to fix this so I can hit modify pattern, select the one that I need to modify and hit continue and it's already on move. So I'm going to uh, move this up a little bit, hit finished. I'm going to do that again, modify, select that one, hit continue and I'm going to snap that one into place and hit finished and it still looks like it needs to be modified a little bit select it again I'm going to use that snap point and hit finished and now that is good enough uh, for this training portion of it. Um, so now I have the entire whole cloth done. You can see that um, the whole thing, uh, what size, it's all 100%. We know that the design is 58 inches. So if I wanted to modify and select all and hit continue, I can now scale the entire piece up until it fills in the space a little bit more. I can move the whole thing 
and this is little baby movements and I'm going to scale it one more time and now I'm going to hit finished right now I have the whole cloth quilt I've scaled it up a little bit I'm going to hit finished and I'm going to hit save quilt pattern and I'm going to say save the quilt and I'm going to name this new quilt something and I'm just going to call it uh, Mulan tutorial and I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to save this in this catalog my whole quilt catalog I hit select <clears throat> and now this whole quilt is on my IQ stick which I could take to the IQ tablet I can sync the two and then I can open an existing project uh, under the whole cloth patterns and this is all ready to sew out I will start on the center and sew these two out on the design on the IQ tablet there's a little cross here in the center and I've made a little marking on the quilt top so I can use those two points as alignment points. So I'll sew row uh, one, row two, row three, row four, and row five, roll the quilt back to the center, and then repeat the process going down. So that is the tutorial for how to import a whole cloth quilt in rows. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish there. Because I am recording these segments out of order, um, I can't guarantee all the components that are gonna be in the video. Um, normally I record um, things on the computer, on the IQ stick, in the house, uh, on my computer, uh, but uh, because I have taken care of my mom, the house is a little bit noisy and it was picking up too much ambient noise. So I'm gonna try and do that part later hopefully when the house quiets down. What I'm going to do now is uh, I have the design, the whole cloth design, uh, edited on the IQ stick. What I did was bring in the rows one at a time, which I hope I will be able to show you that, and then uh, started the center up and then worked from the center back down to have all of the uh, rows done. Now, why do they have uh, different options for loading a design? Why not just bring it all in as one block, the way I did in a previous video? And um, there's two reasons for that. When you bring in the whole cloth quilt as a single block design, you still have to go in and cut the whole block into rows because the machine can only sew so many inches deep at a time. So you'd be getting obstruction notices. So to prevent having to edit all that, you just bring it in in rows and then it will sew in rows the way a panto does, one row after the other. The difference between this and a panto would be that the rows are different each time. Uh, some machines also won't allow you to bring in a design that's much bigger than your design space so that is another option another reason for that but I have the design on my IQ stick I'm going to go ahead and upload it to the IQ and then we're going to hopefully be able to start in the center of the quilt and work back uh, because I have the quilt rolled up to the middle I've never used the middle as the home before, the starting point. So I may have to uh, do some realignment, most certainly. But we're gonna go ahead and get that step done after I move the camera. I'm going to uh, synchronize my IQ stick with the IQ. So I'm going to hit uh, synchronize. It's asking me to insert the IQ stick which I'm doing. It's applying an update. Software was up updated. I want to do an interactive sync, which means that both pieces will uh, transfer over anything that is different on either piece, the IQ tablet or on the stick.
So I'm going to hope that when I open up my um, patterns that my in a whole cloth pattern I have that whole design so I'm going to hit design sew quilt start new and I'm uh, overriding anything that I had been working on whole quilt okay here is my Moulin Rouge whole cloth rose this is what I edited inside and that was in my uh, existing work, not in a new work. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Resetting my clock. I'm going to save a copy of it. And you can see now that I have my whole cloth design on the tablet. And I uh, am going to go ahead and hit continue. Okay, so I have to, it says touch a reference point on the screen. I'm going to touch the very center of my star, which will be the center of the quilt, and then I'm going to go from there, but I'm going to mark a line on there. I'm a little bit fidgety today, can you tell? I'm just going to mark a diagonal line across the center of my star and I'm going to use that as my center point and now I'm going to touch the center. Okay, so now hopefully I have uh, realigned the quilt to the center instead of the upper left hand corner which is what we normally would do. So I'm going to hit sew quilt. It shows that I am right at the center and it's going to ask me the first pattern to sew. I'm going to select the very center and hit continue. Sew quilt. And it has pulled up the thread, done my first stitch. So I'm on manual and I'm going to go ahead and hit start. I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer so you can see. This is my very center, and it's sewing around the star. I should be able to um, get a pretty good representation of how this is working. I'm just going to move these out of the way. You can see my white water soluble basting thread. I basted fairly heavily so that the, uh, I could reduce the amount of shrink that's on the quilt as the design sews up. This particular one element is only going to sew for about two minutes. And you may wonder, am I nervous? Yes, I'm nervous. I haven't done this before, and I uh, hope that it turns out well, not only because it's my quilt, but because I'm showing you how to do something. Uh, and some of the learning will come from that uh, online part on the inside. And I'm a little too close to the front here, so I'm gonna have to move back a little bit and realign the quilt. I realigned, I rolled, I rolled the quilt up about four inches and realigned and I was able to get the bottom portion of that design so I should be good for the rest of this row. There's one tiny one eighth of an inch glitch there 
but because I'm using green thread on a green quilt, I don't think that's going to show up very much. And I do anticipate having a few little flaws in here, but this, I don't know any way to learn. I don't have uh, access to uh, classes that are teaching this specific thing that I want to learn. And sometimes trial by fire or trial and error is the best way to achieve that learning process. And we just finished the first pattern. It only had two minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and because that's an in independent component, I'm going to pull the uh, needle up and cut the thread. This is component two. It will also go over and do the border, at which point I should be able to see how well we did with the sizing of the quilt. That is the end of that component. Now it's going to move over to the border element. Did my first stitch, pulling up my thread, hitting start. Here we should see how close we are to the edge when we get to that side of the design. This again is a one minute component. The next row when it uh, sews all the way across the quilt will be a little bit longer segment. So, but I can already see, I have about one inch from the edge of the quilt, which I think is fantastic. I hope it'll be that way on the other side as well. Now this quilt design is a very uh, dense pattern. You certainly don't have to quilt every single inch of the quilt. The batting allows for up to four to five inches generally, sometimes even more. So I know by the time I get the binding on this quilt, it will be more than sufficient for uh, maintaining the integrity of the quilting and the quilt itself. And we're coming right up to the last, very last portions of this design. Then we can go ahead and realign for the next position. Where my center block started was a, a point and then it came in and started the design. There's a very clear line there where that block started. It was the uh, in, end point of that line. That's where I'm moving the needle from my machine. So when I roll up the quilt, I have a very clear place to point at on the tablet itself for my realignment point. So I'm paying attention to doing that before I roll up the quilt, just to give myself a good starting point. We're on the outside border element and um, I haven't seen yet how far over the design is going to go as far as spacing. So I want to see what happens on the outer edge. We're doing good on the inside edge, the space between the outer border and the inner border. We're coming up now on what will be the outer border. So we have about two inches on this side. So I could have come over um, another half of an inch to the right to make this absolutely perfect. But um, as long as it's still all in the quilt, I'm pretty happy about that. 
after we do this last element, I'll roll the quilt again and we'll do the uh, connecting part of the inner border, which will go all the way uh, across the center. Okay, so that's it for the outer border on that segment. I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my threads and then clip the thread. But I'm going to put the needle back right where it was. And I'm going to use that as my realignment point. And so I'm going to uh, reduce the tension and roll the quilt. So far we've done this, this, these two, and these two. Right now we're going to start and do this piece, which is the top of the inner border. And then we'll do these two components of the outer border. Then we'll roll up one more time and we'll do the top. Once we have that finished, we're going to advance back down to the center where we've already done these components and we're going to work our way down. Hopefully by working from the center out, we get the pattern centered as much as possible on the actual quilt, but we also don't have any uh, problems with shrink. Uh, shrink is being pushed all in one direction. And I'm a little bit too far forward, so I'm going to push this back just an inch and restart. We're going to be sewing up from the inner border on the right side, all the way across the top center, and then back down joining the inner border on the left side. One thing that I will also say is that I always use uh, low contrast thread, especially when I'm doing something new. So I would have to have a pretty horrific error for it to be obvious when the quilting is finished. So if the alignment isn't exact, if I'm off an eighth or a half inch, um, it's not really gonna be visible with this green thread on the green quilt. I am using a green isocord in the top and a green isocord in the bobbin. This particular uh, design is a little over 12 minutes, so we'll watch just a portion of that. to sew out the inner border, I'm going to do the two segments, one on the right, one on the left of the outer border, and then we're going to realign the quilt at the top row.
my inner border came all the way over it was about a half an inch away so I just went ahead and straight lined the end of one to the beginning of the other just to close that little tiny gap I've restarted at the top part of the outer border element and I'm going to go ahead and pull up that th bobbin thread this will sew up the edge of the border on the left I'll move over to do the edge of the border on the right and then I can advance the quilt one more time so I can do the top border connecting all of those elements together we're often running on the top border there are no other elements in this section except the top border so it started on the right hand side it's going to go up the right all the way across the top and join to the left hand side and then we'll be able to roll back down to the middle of the quilt and start from the middle down the whole top half done from the center star up so now it's time to go ahead and roll the quilt back down and I'll have to choose an alignment spot in the middle of the quilt since there isn't going to be anything connecting here at the top but the design sewed really nice it went pretty close up to the edge I'm anticipating that when we get to the bottom there's going to be a, a larger gap at the bottom than there is at the top but so far it looks pretty centered so I'm going to go ahead and roll the quilt up so that the finished part of the center is up on the rollers and get realigned and start working from the bottom down because I have made a center marking on the center of my star and there is a center crosshair at the center of the design I used that as my realignment point I made sure that I was able to sew out this uh, center block, the right and the bottom portion of that. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sew out. It only has like two minutes left. And then we can go ahead with row number two, which is just a small portion of the inner border and the outer border. Just one design link. I'm on the last element on the right hand side for the border. The next row that I would move up will be the inner border for the bottom. And then the last row will be the outer border for the bottom. And then this quilt is finished. We did start from the center and work up. And then we worked from the center and worked down to make sure that we had the alignment as close as possible to being centered. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll the quilt up two more times. And then we'll go ahead and get this off the frame. I still have to film the segment on the IQ stick showing you how we brought in the rows to the quilt uh, one by one and why we did that. So I hope that we get that all done and probably this is going to be a little bit of a long video but it is covering a lot of information. You can see all of my basting stitches. I just did uh, vertical, horizontal, I did some diagonal. Uh, I even went back in some of the areas and just did some uh, curved lines uh, just to stabilize the quilt as much as possible. This white thread is called Parish. 
I believe it's by Filtech. It's a water soluble thread. So when we wash this quilt or spritz it with water, all of this white stitching will just disappear. Right now we are stitching out the bottom section of the inner border. And then all we have left is the outer border to do. This has about 12 more minutes left. I really like the idea of this water soluble thread so I don't have to go back and pick out the uh, thread. I just don't know how well and how long it would hold up if you lived in a high humidity climate. so there really wasn't any way to correct it. I could have guesstimated by pulling it down a little bit, but it would have uh, done that to the entire quilt. So I'm fine with a little bit of overlap there. If I want to, I could go back and remove just enough stitches so that there would be no overlap. can see from the bottom of the quilt where the bottom of the stitching is. I'm about three inches from the bottom and that is just part of the learning curve. This quilt probably stretched a little bit longer since it's on the frame than it was when I measured it. Uh, so that would come into play. If I want to, I could just sew a little bit of a curved line at the bottom just to echo some of the stitching from the pattern, but um, I'll wait until I see if there was a need for that once the entire piece is done. I also could trim a fraction of this off to reduce it a little bit so it's not visibly noticeable, um, and I could just do a straight line across there. All of those things to correct the design being a little bit shorter than it should be, or that I would have liked it to have been. Here we are, right down to the finish line. We've got less, than, well, a little bit more than one minute to go, and then this design will be finished. of the stress of this project is over at this point. We didn't have any major fluffles. I didn't think I was going to be happy with that three and a half inch strip at the bottom of the quilt that wasn't quilted. And I didn't think I was in the mood to do excellent quality pre-motion quilting there this, this afternoon. So what I did was I went through my IQ library and was looking at small designs that would be used for sashing. I found one from a collection called Heather. It is an approximately a three inch design and I brought it in at the bottom of the quilt at 
three inches. So it's just going to sew a little feather plume from one side to the other and fill in that space. And um, it's doing pretty good overall. Every once in a blue moon, it touches a part of the other design, but I'm okay with that because I'm using low contrast thread. I would rather have the quilt evenly quilted. Well, I have finished this uh, whole cloth quilt. This is the second time I've attempted a whole cloth quilt. The first one was a much smaller piece. It was only about 26 inches. It was a tablecloth and I brought the design in as a block. I only had to split it, I think twice, and do the top half and the bottom half because I have about 19 inches of throat space on my machine. So this time was a bit more complicated, but I didn't want to just bring it in as a block again. Uh, I wanted to bring it in in rows. And so I will attempt to get that video shot uh, and hopefully it can proceed this one in the edit, in the editing room. The reason why I continue to want to learn more is because you never know until you know how to do something when that knowledge might come in handy. So that is why I keep pushing myself to learn more things. Now I know it's not going to be incredibly visible on this particular piece, but there may come a time when I want to do a whole cloth quilt on just a regular uh, piece of fabric, like satin or silk du peony for instance, because I love silk. Uh, and in that case, the design really will pop out. Um, I also could use a heavier weight thread as I'm doing the stitching. But as I'm just learning, I used low contrast thread. It was a green on a green quilt, uh, same value, same for the back. They both were isocord thread, but I chose the thread color based on the back of the quilt and the top color based on the front of the quilt so that the value would be uh, very close to what it was stitching on. There's a slight difference between the front and the back, but that doesn't show up in the stitching. I also used two battings here so that once this is finished, uh, washed and everything, the design will pop out really good. Now the design didn't line up exactly the way I wanted it to. It was off a little bit. It was fine at the top, but it, uh, the quilt was a little bit longer than what I anticipated after it got stretched out. And that's kind of a factor that's hard to plan for. But um, so as I said, this is my second and I definitely want to continue on this path of whole cloth and overall designs because Urban Elements has a wealth of whole cloth quilts as well as a lot of the um, design clubs that they've been doing for many years. They have a complete set of blocks, setting triangles, corner triangles, circle, circles, uh, corner units, there's sashing and full-size pantos. Sometimes there's two sizes of pantos in those sets and I want to know how to utilize all of that and I'm bringing you along for the ride. Um, I know you can't see really good from where you are so I will bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see some of the stitching and also just to go over again some of the patterns. But I have a question for you. I'd love to know if you have ever done any long arm whole cloth quilts um, and if this is something that would be interesting to, to, for you to try, um, I'd love to hear how many you might have done and what your successes and failures have been with it. Not that it's a failure, it's really just a stepping stone to the next step. Um, but I'd love to hear how many whole cloth quilts you have done using digital designs. And um, also I'd love to hear if this is something that you'd be interested in doing. Um, I. I don't think it's going to impact me as far as me wanting to teach them because I love them. Um, I want to do more and more. That's part of the thing I love about quilting. So I'm going to pause, bring the camera in so you could hopefully see some of the stitching. And then I'm also going to reiterate some of the patterns that came with this set. <laughs> You can clearly see on here all of the white from my basting. That'll all get washed away when I get the quilt wet. Um, I have a couple little threads to cut from the back. And I just wanted to show you, this is our whole cloth uh, in the row sections. All of these are the same. And this is our center block. 
these are all the components that came with this whole cloth set. This particular piece is the corner element for the four corners if you were just using this as a border element. And this is the, uh, I believe the Petite Panto. I think I've got two copies of that. And then there's gonna be a Petite Border. There's a setting triangle if you were doing an on-point quilt. And then uh, the rest of what I have goes into other uh, whole block quilts. So I'm going to get inside and try and uh, capture the video of the creation of bringing in the blocks on the IQ stick, which I've already done but didn't get to capture. And um, then I'll go ahead and try and get this edited all together. I will have to wait and see how long the whole thing is to see if it's going to be cut into two videos or one because there's several segments of that. But um, until then, I mean, I won't know till I post it. Today's Wednesday. It has to be posted by Saturday. So um, I just have to get busy on that. <laughs> So thanks for stopping by and going through this process with me. I hope it was enjoyable to you, or if not enjoyable, insightful perhaps. Uh, until next time, take care of each other, and thanks for stopping by.